This is a film for everyone who is stuck in their mind. I know I'm not alone. The story starts at 320 kilometers an hour as I'm taking a train from Salzburg to Paris. It's about 800 kilometers. My ride lasts seven and a half hours. If we take us back to the 1800s, 200 years ago, let's say, doing a travel like I do today would have been quite a different experience. Back then, we would have gone with a horse carriage. These things go between 16 to 48 kilometers a day. So all the way to Paris would have taken 17 days at best conditions and up to 50 at worst. So what does this have to do with being stuck in my head? Well, I say under the best conditions it takes 17 days to get there and I define best from the perspective of the young 21st century man that grew up in a world where everything is better when it's faster. Maybe they enjoyed that 50 day long journey. Perhaps this was indeed better for them. We live in a more advanced world every single day. Our lifespans increase, there's more to experience, we're interconnected all around the globe, technologies improve, everything kinda is possible. And yet, there is this consensus that people nowadays aren't more or less happy or content than people were in the past. Happiness might not be attained through anything external, but I could have assumed that it might be a bit easier to feel good when things are as advanced as they are today. Please don't get me wrong, we definitely have issues going on in the world right now and I don't want to sound ignorant from my tight-minded Western privilege perspective here. But over all this time, why have we not developed in this day and age where everything became more available and possible into much happier and content human beings? What is that thing from our era that makes living rough sometimes? On this regard, I've been dealing with a variety of frustrations over the course of the whole summer. So I noticed a pattern in my life recently that everything, like the, the older I get, the more bureaucratic everything becomes. There's less of this spontaneous spirit that has been just very present in my life when I was younger. <laughs> I need to plan things so far ahead in advance with like even my friends just to be able to meet. <laughs> And I have to be at all these different places at different times in the future and it's just like everything is so bureaucratic. I needed to break out of this rigidness and, and, and dive into an adventure. A big part of this is that we obviously we're all getting older, getting more advanced in what we want to do in life. And everybody's just in their own film. I have all these projects going on. I, I think about it constantly and it's, it's just such a big thing in my brain. So I, I went to Paris and I made all these experiences and, and tried to be immersed in a different culture and lifestyle and just different life and try to get that spontaneousness reawakened within me. <laughs> Why is it though human beings are not the strongest creatures on the planet compared to other species, the human beings are dominating this world simply because of our ability to use tools, isn't it? We are this much, because of our instruments we become that much. Right now, there is one little screw here in this furniture. I will ask you, you're a strong guy, I will ask you to unscrew this with your hands. Sometimes it's really hard to stop thinking. Our default mode is thinking. Everything in and around us requires us to think constantly about solving problems, getting from A to B, get there, do this. Um, there's just so much thinking involved so that all the other options and how we could experience life kind of get milded down or get less priority or just are not as valuable to society as thinking. The tool of thought is what makes humans stand out from other animals. To reflect on that is intimidating because we've created so much beauty and so much destruction with it. We are the most intelligent species on the planet. Our competence is increasing by the day. What a uh, thousand people or ten thousand uh, people could not do a thousand years ago, today one man can do. One important thing is we must be functioning consciously. If we function unconsciously and compulsively, we become a destructive force. 
and we can see parts of this destructive force when we look at our daily lives. How many videos on overthinking have you made already? A lot, a lot. <laughs> it's a very common human experience. You feel like we should learn to shut up our brains more often? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's like in, in appropriate yeah. moments, right? You don't want to be you don't want to be in autopilot mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay, I'm ready to beat you. Okay. But I feel like yeah, you don't want to be on autopilot mode, but at the same time, so much worry and so much thinking is so unnecessary. It adds nothing to your yeah. life. It seems like it's everywhere. So many are affected by this. We've become a generation full of overthinkers. But then also, in the world we live in right now, with all its advancements, this sort of is required from us to keep thriving. We need to have our brains on 24-7. That is the only way to stay relevant. So here's a little shift of scenery, not in Paris anymore. This is in the Austrian mountains. But I just wanted to check in here quickly um, to mention that this definitely is a huge topic for so many people. And so many of us, including me right now in the video, try to find a solution in our brain for it. We try to wrap our heads around the problem we're trying to solve it, which is just another rational thing to do. So I just wanted to show you quickly that I personally have found an escape out of this rabbit hole, out of this dilemma. Because I think what we've been talking about so far is actually within our nature. There is no solution against overthinking. That's just how humans are when they have neocortexes attached to their brains. This is so scheiße. <laughs> but still, I want to show you my escape strategy out of the thinking, out of these rabbit holes. It's mid-September um, and we're on 2000 meters altitude, so this definitely is getting towards the colder side already. This particular practice opened up a whole new quality to my life. And, I mean, there are many different ways in how to do it, but that's just what I learned. When you do cold exposure, the body suddenly needs to survive and there is literally no time to think anymore. At that moment, the body has other things to do. Oh, oh God. <laughs> this obviously has so many more layers to it. Scientific, you can look it up, but also from an emotional, mental point of view. But I thought making a video in how to get out of the head wouldn't be complete without offering a simple, unbiased solution against it. Don't even think about it. If you struggle with your thoughts, don't even try to judge the process because that's part of the thinking. That's part of the rationality trying to find a solution for it. Just go for it. So coming to an end with this, maybe it's true. It could be excessive thinking. That is the thing that makes life rough when we're stuck in our own films, trying to find answers and solutions by rationalizing everything. I'm not surprised. The problem may not lie in the thoughts themselves. <laughs> Maybe it's the quantity of how often we started to make them appear. We might just be so used to have to toggle on the whole time, we forgot how it could be when we shut our rational brains off every once in a while. What else is there? I have a question. When we truly understand the potential of this, what is the best way for us to utilize thinking as one of our greatest tools? And how do we notice the right moment to shut things off again, to be able to explore all the other dimensions, all the other layers of experience of what it means to be a human? It may just be all available. It's simply a matter of how we choose to look at life and what we want to be open for. Yeah, just some thoughts I had.